welcome to our Cooking Connection virtual class for our Taste of Asia event here with HEB. I'm Chef Lauren and I'm going to be joined today by Chef Scott as our moderator. I'm so excited to be here. Lauren, welcome. Thank you. Thank you I'm, for having me. I'm so excited to learn. You've got so much, and I only know this because we've done a couple of rehearsals. You've got mm -hmm. so much stuff that I've already learned and I'm so excited Thank for the you. folks at home, for I'm the customers so excited and clients. to be here. They're gonna, they're gonna learn so much, so let's do this. All right, so tonight's class is based on our Taste of Asia event going on right now in store. If you guys didn't know, Cooking Connection is back. So if you go to your local store, you guys are going to get to see some of your favorite HEB chefs. And to kick this off, we're going to be doing our Taste of Asia event. So all the products that we're using here today are found by your Cooking Connection. All of our specialties, Stick and Tine and Adams Reserve, those are all on special right now as well. So when you taste these and you fall in love with them, go visit your store and take advantage of some awesome sales we have going on right now with these. And you can also figure out some new ways other than what we're doing tonight to kind of introduce these out to your family. And there's more flavors out there as well. So just make sure you go buy your local HEB and visit one of your Cooking Connection chefs and let them show you as well what they've been doing with some of these products. I'm really excited about tonight's class because this is gonna be a great introduction into Asian cooking. Um, these are gonna be very easy recipes very attainable ingredients, and most of all, they're quick and they're delicious. So that's what everyone's looking for, right? I think sometimes that can kind of hold people back from trying something new for dinner because it can seem a little bit intimidating if you haven't cooked with these products, but we're here to make your life easier. So we've put these in some very straightforward recipes that are packed with flavor and are really good on time. So you can have dinner in a quick amount of time and you can try something new with the family as well. I'm excited. You also said, which is a key, right. that these are great introductory Asian yeah. recipes. So nothing right. that's super complicated or something that may just blow your palate away going, right. oh, I'm not ready for this. See, these are really, really great. And all the ingredients are just those little things that you can do, like that you just said, kick it to up really a little just bit. kick it up right. and give it. It's a great way to break out of your normal recipe routine. Yes. Definitely, definitely. And tonight we're gonna taste on a lot of different varieties of Asian cuisine. Uh, we have a little bit of Thai, a little bit of Japanese, a little Chinese, a little Korean. So we really are gonna give you a variety of options and flavor profiles to see what works best for you and your family. And to kind of give you that introduction, like we said, and just kind of introduce your palate to some new flavors, hopefully. Or if you're familiar with these flavors in a restaurant setting, this is a really easy way to bring those home and you can have it on a quick weeknight dinner. Um, tonight, we're gonna have four pretty easy recipes. We're gonna start out with our Thai spring rolls. Those are gonna be our butternut spring rolls. And then we're gonna flow into one of my favorite styles of ramen, which is a shoyu based ramen with chicken. And then we're gonna go into my absolute go-to at Korean barbecue, which is gonna be Korean short ribs. And we're gonna finish off with a really easy, healthy, quick side dish of some garlic chili crisp broccoli. I love everything you got going on right now. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I'm so excited. So if you guys are ready, then we can just go ahead and get started. We're gonna start out with those spring rolls. Um, one thing that I did mention, the name of your recipe is gonna say butternut. So originally this recipe calls for butternut spirals. Uh, you should have a little chef note there at the end that I did substitute today with a little bit of green mango or you can do green papaya. Um, I did this for a couple reasons. When I think summer, I think mango more than I think butternut. So for me, it just made a little bit more sense right now to use these really great mangoes that we have in store. And it's also gonna pair really, really nicely with the pork and the peanut sauce. So this is just a really nice variation of how you can do your spring rolls. Spring rolls are super versatile. So whatever you guys wanna put in there, um, if you don't like the sweetness of the mango, we were saying a little earlier, you can do the green papaya, which will still give you some crunch, but won't be as sweet. Cucumber, if you wanna avoid the sweetness at all, that is totally, totally up to you. Um, we are gonna go ahead and start by getting in some of our pork. So I'm gonna take a skillet here, get this going. 
That's a great tip, Lauren, about the, uh, the mango being like when you're picking a green mango, like you want something that's a lot firmer because you do want that texture of, you know, like sweet mango that's got right. a little red, a little orange color on it that's softer. Right. You nice want to look sweet. for something real green that hasn't started to turn red because once it starts to turn red and orange, then you're really going to start getting into kind of a mushier texture and that's not going to hold up well. Whenever we cut the mango later, you're going to get a chance to kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, you want it to have a little bit of firmness to it still. So for texture wise, when you bite into it, but also it's just going to help you roll these rolls a lot easier. And that's just like just the regular old ground pork, correct? Right. So this is just ground pork from the store. We are actually going to be using a little bit. I think I left that a little close to the heat. So our seasoning got a little, a little sticky. This oven is super hot guys, this grill and this um, stove. So when I'm cooking along today as well, you're gonna notice my ingredients are probably gonna cook a little bit faster than yours at home, which is totally okay. Take your time, don't rush it. If we leave you behind, like I said, I have Chef Scott there. He's gonna be moderating our chat. So if you get lost, just go ahead and write in those questions and we can help you figure out kind of where uh, you left off or where we can pick you back up. That's and all thanks to our uh, 50,000 BTU stove we have here. We like to really light things up quickly. That's how we like to. Scott's uh, favorite brag. You know, it's, it's more fun to kind of like catch things on fire and or create a little risk in the kitchen. It's more fun for people yeah, to watch. Yeah, you know? definitely. So we try to do that when we can. So we're going to get this pork going. You really want to cook it through before we start on the next part. Um, spring rolls, we're going to be doing these today more as like an appetizer. So something you can kind of start the meal out with. But you can totally make this a whole meal, guys. If you're looking for something fun to do, go home, set up one of the electric skillets right in the middle of your table, get a little butter, get whatever proteins your family likes. So maybe some shrimp, maybe some pork, maybe some chicken. You can do this ground pork as well. And a ton of vegetables and herbs, lay it all out. And you guys can have a family night where everybody kind of grills their own meat, builds their own spring roll. It's super fun and really interactive, which is something that I really love about Asian cuisine. You guys are going to see throughout the recipes that we do that a lot of them are very much um, kind of social. There's such a big social aspect to it in a lot of Asian cooking. And it's not just about eating, but it's also about getting with your family and your friends, having a big interactive meal together that everybody can kind of contribute to. And I think it's, that's really important what you're saying. You're talking yeah. about community. And I think especially over the summertime, you know, kids are out of school, there's a lot of activities going on. This is like the time where- Right. You know, you're looking for new things down. to do. Yeah, slow down a little bit. Cook yeah. together, make it more of a community event. Open of up course, some wine, did right? I offer, did they offer you any wine yet, Lauren? Did they offer you any cocktail? My margarita machine's broken. I'm apologizing, but oh. you know that's what you should be doing. Next right time, now. next time I'm here, I expect that machine. If you're cooking along with geared Chef up Lauren, and ready to go, <laughs> <laughs> you should have a cocktail. Um, we got a great question for you, Lauren. Um, somebody's right. asking, can I swap pork or chicken or turkey for the pork? Oh, of course. Ground turkey would be fantastic in here. Um, ground chicken would be great as well. Whatever your family likes best, or maybe you already have it on hand, go ahead and add that. So now that our pork is cooking through a bit, I'm going to come over here and just kind of rough chop some peanuts. I'm going to add this to our pork with our peanut sauce. And you really don't have to be precise, guys. This is going to add some texture. And it's going to pair really nicely with that pretty Thai peanut sauce that we're going to be adding in to our pork. Chef, you mentioned we talked earlier about like, you know, obviously peanuts, the highly you know, big allergens. So right. It's a very, very peanuts. What else could you do for a little texture in this? If you're so if you wanted to add it, you could actually add up some chopped green apple in here. That'd be awesome. It'd pair really, really nice with the pork and be really crunchy. I'd probably do that off the heat so it doesn't cook the apples down. Um, and also, if you're allergic to peanuts, instead of the peanut sauce, we do have a brand new Dan Dan noodle sauce that is a tahini sesame base with sort of a similar consistency to the pretty Thai. So you can actually use it the same exact way and not have to worry about that peanut allergy. So that would actually be a great substitution that would get you pretty close to this flavor here. And we added that pretty Thai peanut sauce and those chopped peanuts. And we're going to add a little bit of green onion as well. And then we're just going to let that soak up 
the sauce a bit and we're gonna just move that off the heat to cool down a little bit. Already smells good, I love it. We had a I great know, question that's kind of like, as you're, as you're leading into this spring roll as we're doing all this, Chef, there was a question about, can I use lettuce wraps instead of what you're gonna of show course. us? Of course, so we're gonna be using the rice paper rolls here, which are gonna be a great gluten-free option, but if you guys are looking for a more keto-friendly option, do lettuce wraps. Same exact items that we're using here today, same veggies, same herbs, but just use a lettuce wrap instead of one of these guys. And then you have a low carb option that could really fit whatever um, lifestyle or diet needs that you need. I love these. I just want to say these finger wrappers, yeah. I, I don't What's roll them What's better in well. summer, right? I, yeah. I'm telling you, I don't roll them well, but I love <laughs> Well, hopefully you'll get some tips tonight to roll them a little bit oh, yeah. better. So I'm going to go ahead and put this water to the side. This is going to be lukewarm water, guys. Um, you don't want it super hot or else this is just going to disintegrate in there. Uh, so don't boil it. Hot water out of your faucet is perfectly fine. But at the same time, if it's too cold, this is going to take a while to um, kind of absorb into the paper. So lukewarm kind of... I'd say the temperatures of like a baby's bath, like something you would feel okay putting a baby on. That's about where you want to go. Scott likes to say, what was it? The temperature the of- Gulf a, of Mexico. The Gulf not of Mexico, refreshing, right. But so, hot enough to where it'll right. get the job done, right? Hot enough to where it's not refreshing <laughs> and you don't want to drink it, like you're there. So we're going to put those right to the side. I am going to get in some fresh herbs. Um, I'm actually going to be using our fresh cut cilantro. So this is a quick time saver. You guys can pick up in your HEB produce department. Absolutely. And just to show you here, I'm going to actually cut some fresh green onion. So that's super easy. We're going to be cutting this at a bias. Cut your top off. I like that. Cutting on the bias, obviously, for folks at home, we're just going to give it a little prettier look to it. You get that right. nice little kind of oval shape. Just looks prettier when you roll it all up. Just um, something I love, a little fancy. Taken, you just said it. The value added veg. Mm -hmm. You walk into your HEB, there's so much stuff that we've already right. prepped and chopped for you. That's a great thing to take advantage yeah, of. Yeah, so when you want a quick ease. dinner, I mean, we're just there to help you out. This is super simple. I mean, it's not hard to chop cilantro, but sometimes you just don't want to and you just want to throw it in there. So we're going to be using some of that. Um, I actually already have some chopped up right over here that I'll be using with the green onion. So once you guys get this in, actually, you know what? Let's do our mango first. Just chef, so that we have that out you. of the way. I got a great question for you, Chef. Yeah, I'm going to ask course. you because uh, you're cooking and it's your menu and it's okay. your recipe. So Carol would like to know what cocktail would you pair with this? Um, my favorite, honestly, Prosecco. I love Prosecco with Asian cooking. It can go well with a lot of the flavors and really I feel like stand up next to it because that little bit of bubble there can help cut through some of the heavier flavors. Um, so I would just do a nice ice cold Prosecco. I feel like that pairs really well with a lot of Asian cooking, especially Thai cooking. So Have that's my, my personal Charlotte? preference. You and Charlotte, the, the bubbles. There's we get not along, one right? Thing that she Where is she? See, she would have brought the Prosecco. She's, I told her yeah. to go get the Prosecco. She's, she'll okay. be here. She'll eventually. be back later. Once this is done, we'll, we'll pop open the Prosecco. So we're going to go ahead and cut this mango, guys. As you can see, I already peeled it with a regular vegetable peeler. It was a green mango, no red spots. Uh, you can tell it's still a little bit sweeter because you see that color on here but that's okay it's still firm enough for us to use what we need it for don't forget you have that big seed in here going long so yeah, we're just gonna that weird just that weird, it's so weird you know, yeah like so you don't want to get too close to that or else you get that weird little texture exactly so we are just gonna take a couple slices here the good thing about cutting mango though it really is it does kind of tell you where to stop because the, the right. seed in the middle will just has a great guide you. right so we're just gonna take that Stack it up and just do some matchsticks. These will be a little bit thicker than matchsticks, but you know what? That's okay. That's all right. It's hey, totally you know, fine. Still be, it'll look pretty. It's still going to be delicious and exactly. it's still going to look pretty. So, you know what? We're just going to go with it. So, obviously, Chef, an unripe mango, it's going to be less sweet than one of those really, really sugary, like been sitting right. longer. So, you're going to get a little bit of sweetness, but you also get that great texture, just kind of this tropical. Right. And a true it. green mango is usually a bit smaller. Those are a little crunchier as well. They are harder to find um, right now. So, this was just a regular mango that's just not that ripe yet. So, as long as it just has a little bit of firmness to it still, it's great. And again, and like I, she, Chef said earlier, if you don't like mango or if that's not your thing, you can always use cucumber or something right, else you can throw exactly. in there as well to substitute. Yeah, some people really don't like the sweet with the heat. I totally get it. Um, 
So like I said, do cucumber. We're doing these herbs, but if your basil garden's going crazy right now, basil's great in there. I personally love mint. I think mint would be fantastic in oh, these yeah. with the pork, the peanut, and the mango. I'm with so you. So that's what I would do at home. Um, but you guys can really do whatever you like. If you hate cilantro, you have other options right there, right? Love it. I love cilantro, so I'm gonna use a lot. So we have our warm water here. And all you're gonna do guys, is give these a quick little dunk, just once around in that warm water. You see mine still is a little bit firm. Yeah, still a little pliability to it, not right. completely You don't want it to come out of that water super, super um, pliable already, because that just means it's gonna keep disintegrating. As it sits here on the board, it's still soaking up water and it's still softening. So you have to give it a little time to do that. So don't leave it in there until it's the texture you're used to eating. It should still be a little firm. It's already softening up quite a bit. So yeah, have a little bit of patience with it, you're saying, just let it, let it kind of do its thing. You don't have right. with great, because you don't have to really rush, because you're kind of letting it soak in anyway. So there's no right. mad dash to roll this thing. But don't go too slow, because then it might just soak into your board. So you know, there, it, there's, a, there's a little bit of wiggle room there. So as you guys can see, I laid my fresh herbs down. I did that as kind of a bed for my pork. You want the pork to cool down a bit. I've had this off the heat, but I'm still scared there's a little bit too much heat in there. So I'm actually just going to tuck that in there. And I might even go in with some more herbs. That's good. It'll kind of activate your herbs to kind of warm. Yeah. Warm them up, make it real fragrant. Definitely. And it'll protect your rice paper from that hot meat so it doesn't tear. Now this is a cool little trick of mine. If you want to do these for a party or a show or you're having guests over, whatever you want to highlight to let them know that that's in these rolls. Like if I was doing shrimp, um, today it's mango. I'm going to put that right towards the top here. So our main filling is towards the bottom. I immediately know what I do wrong now. Immediately I know. All right. I've already identified <laughs> See, my failings. You're, you're already learning something, I'm right? Telling you. So we're gonna put the mango right on top. That's gonna be our showcase piece. Then you just grab from the bottom really gently, guys. Don't, for, don't be scared to get your fingers in there. Roll it tight. When you're about halfway, pull those ends in. Keep it tight, keep on rolling, keep on going. Boom. And that's it. So beautiful, that right? That's how you get that mango. You leave that, just that little spot right there in the middle of the rice paper. Main filling at the bottom, your showcaser right on top, and then it's ready to go. So Chuck, we're going to... I only want like four or five of those. Okay. So, yeah. You know, or if you want to make me seven just in case, just so I have a backup, that's probably even better, but I'll do... Okay. <laughs> so we're just going to be playing that with a little bit more of our Thai peanut sauce, guys. And that's really it. It's super simple. You can roll those. I wouldn't do them too far ahead. Um, you really want that rice paper to be nice and fresh. So definitely make sure you keep that in mind if you're going to be serving these at a party or something. You Give those a little time. This was a great, I could take just for myself, this is a great tutorial because I love to do these at home. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously, I try to roll mine like a free bird's burrito, which obviously you can, okay. uh, you can imagine. Okay. And how is that? We probably have blowouts every once in a while, but I just try to re-roll re them. So. Uh -huh. That's a great, I like the, the, the folding the mango up just a little bit higher in the, in the thing. It's a great tip. Awesome. I'm glad I could help out with that because I know you love spring rolls. So if I could just make it easier for you to yeah. do it more often, that's great, right? Yes. So tonight that's going to be kind of our little appetizer. If you guys rolled one up with us, go ahead and eat it, munch on it, taste it. Let us know what you think in the comments. Honestly, it is a delicious recipe. I think the mango and the pork really, really complement each other. So I'm excited for you guys to try that one. And then Savory. we're going to transition into one of my favorite styles of ramen, which is shoyu ramen. Uh, this is going to be a considered a clear broth ramen versus a tonkatsu ramen, which is a bit uh, what they consider more milky or cloudy. And Jeff, this- Jeff, will you talk a little bit about, so you talk about ramen, like, so people right. that have never had ramen before, when you okay. say like milky, like, will you talk a little bit about like the shoyu and then like tonkatsu and like- Yeah, of course. Kind of what, what are some of the right. major differences and- So the shoyu, shoyu means soy sauce in Japanese. So this is a soy sauce broth predominantly done with chicken, veggies, water, soy sauce, and then you're, they're just gonna simmer that down into a really nice flavorful broth. So technically it's clear, it's not opaque, you can kind of see through it. Um, and when you do the tonkatsu, which is a super popular style of ramen, if you've ever had that before, if you haven't, it looks milky, but there is no milk, no cream. That's actually from cooking down things that have a lot of collagen, like pork trotters, 
different pieces and it really breaks down that bone and the collagen and fat and it creates a really rich, it's very like really velvety, yeah, like stick really to just... your bones. Something I personally like in the winter, um, but it's summer, we're in Texas. I don't want it. I like yeah, this style a bit better right now. We're trying to peel off clothes, not, right. uh, not stick to your ribs. Exactly. <laughs> and if you guys want to try Tonkatsu Ramen, we also have a Tonkatsu Ramen base by Stick and Tine that's also on sale right now in the store. So you can try both. You can try the shoyu, you can try the Tonkatsu, decide what you like best for yourself. But we're going to start with this Tonkatsu Ramen that we're going to get on the stove. And what's great about this is, because obviously ramen broth takes some time to do, right? right. There's some time that goes into it. And this is great because literally you can go into your local cooking connection, you can grab exactly. this and the, and the work is already done for you. And then you're just now just flavoring it a little differently. Right, when it's five o'clock and you guys are wondering what's for dinner and everyone's asking you what's for dinner, these are gonna be your lifesavers, right? You come into the store, you talk to one of your chefs, tell them, hey, I have chicken at the house and I need something to cook it with. I'm tired of doing it the way we normally do. What can I do? And there will be your cooking connection chef ready to save the day and tell you some awesome things that you can use with your chicken. But the same idea goes for these guys. They're super quick, super, super simple. They're really, really time savers. And that's another reason why I can use boneless chicken in here today. We're doing boneless chicken thighs because you're not looking to get all that flavor from the bone, right? They already did all the hard work for you. That's already in the bottle. You don't have to worry about that. And we're putting unseasoned boneless chicken thighs in here. You guys can use chicken breast if you like, whatever your preference is. But I'm not seasoning it because you remember I told you this was a um, shoyu ramen. So it's a soy sauce base. So it so has plenty of, of flavor right, of flavor already in there. And we're also going to finish it when we garnish it at the end um, with a little bit of our sashimi togarashi seasoning, which has a little citrus peel. And citrus can also mimic kind of the same flavor as salt and give you that same kind of palate reaction. So I don't want you to season this and then it end up being too salty. Definitely wait till the finished product and then kind of go from there and judge whether or not you think that you're going to need a little more salt. Yeah, you, can in always, there. you can always add, but you can't take away. Right. You can't take you away. After that, then you're just gonna have some really salty ramen, so just wait. And we're just gonna brown these, get a little bit of color on them. I like the use of chicken thighs. Obviously you can use chicken breast, like you said, but I like chicken thighs. Yeah, of it's course. Just, it is, there's more fat on it, there's a little more flavor. It's they're just, all, they're combo. delicious, right? They're I'll really always good. pick a chicken thigh over a breast. I know that's like a big debate with people, you know, so you can use whatever cut that you like in here. This is just our favorite, and I just think it showcases really well with the ramen. I feel like it has the chicken thigh gives you a little better chew too in the ramen. Yeah, that definitely. Kind of so to that, once you brown it about, we have our shoyu ramen base and low sodium chicken broth. Again, controlling the sodium. So exactly. Kind of so I'm not going to use the regular chicken broth because that would have just too much salt for me in here for what I'm looking for. So I'm going to just keep that going with. Um, the chicken, I'm gonna actually switch that over to this burner because we're gonna come back to this at the end of the class, guys, because this needs to simmer about 30 minutes. You wanna make sure your chicken's cooked through, reaches 165 degrees, so you have to give it time to simmer. If you're using bone in, it may take you a little bit longer to cook through that chicken, so definitely keep that in mind. That's a great point. But we're just gonna switch that over, let that go. Let it sit, let us it do its thing. We'll check back in on that. Right. And you guys see I already have water boiling. That's going to be for our next item. Our ramen is going to be topped with a boiled egg. And today I am going to show you how to do a six minute boiled egg. I personally prefer, prefer this um, over a regular hard boiled egg in most recipes, but especially ramen because it gives you the option. You're going to see you're going to have a really nice silky, very, very unctuous yolk that kind of flows. And you can mix that into your broth, make it a little bit creamier, or you just eat it by itself. That's my favorite yep. part, so I'll save it Love till it. the end and finish the egg. That's like my dessert, you know? So it's really important to have already boiled or boiling water. And it's also important to take your eggs out for about at least an hour before you plan on cooking them to let them get to room temp. Um, because if you put an ice cold egg into this water, it's probably gonna crack, right? It's gonna crack, you're gonna have a mess. 
and nobody wants that. And we're really, it's gonna be a very time sensitive thing because you don't want to overcook it. If you guys grew up eating those eggs that are hard boiled with a green ring around it, and you know, they're just boiled to death, that is the exact polar opposite of what we're trying to achieve here today. So what you're gonna do is with a slotted spoon, take your room temp egg and just kind of gently lower it in there. A little bit of our water has evaporated because it's a very hot stove, but at home you should have water just covering it, right? Just right above covering right. it. And start your timers immediately. So six minutes is all it needs. It's very, very time six sensitive. Minutes and have a little ice water next to it so that as soon as your timer hits six minutes, guys, take that out. So it's a super critical step that you're talking about. The, the, right. the, the coming to room temperature is a big thing because you're right, like the same thing when they come like, you talk about meats and things like that you're gonna grill. Right. If you take out of a 41 degree fridge a steak, mm -hmm. season it, put it on the grill immediately. By the right. time the outside is nice and crispy, it's You're never gonna inside, get it to the doneness same you thing with want. We had a great exactly. question. Courtney and since you were looking for that heat to just hit the egg yolk, um, it's going to cook right through the egg white, so that'll be nice and firm. But we're pulling it out as soon as that heat is hitting the yolk and making it, cooking it just enough to where it's safe to eat and to where it's a little bit more velvety. It's thickened up a little bit, and that's exactly what we're looking for. We had so, a question. Yeah. We had, uh, Courtney asked, myth or truth, adding salt to water makes it boil faster. Wow, that's... <sighs> What do you say to that? It's true, but it's not noticeable enough to make a difference, I don't think. Right. It will, I mean, it raises the temperature, so it will make it boil. I don't know that if you had a pot, like if we literally right now put the same amount side of pot water side. side by side, right. and with salt. It's not a huge it difference It may boil a all. little faster, but it probably was nothing that's really gonna make it right. a big difference. But always add salt to your pasta water, Courtney. Never forget. Yes, always, because you need to season that. That's what I was gonna say. I was like, it may not make a big difference in boiling time, but it's gonna make a difference in your pasta. So definitely salt that. It should taste like the ocean, yes. and you'll be perfectly fine. So those eggs are gonna salt be cooling down. Mm -hmm. Lauren, I feel like you and I, we have a, there's a, there's Little a kindred spirit Kindred there spirit for, there, right? I'm telling you, you're gonna come to Houston. We're gonna go <laughs> eat. You'll bring she your margarita me. machine. She promised me that. she'd take me around all the mm -hmm. spots and introduce me. So and I'm now it's here, excited. so I can't go back on it because everybody saw. Got so. that right. Holding you to it. We'll have to set that up. <laughs> so that's going to go, guys, on the stove for 30 minutes to get that chicken going. The eggs are going to cool off so that they can be easy to peel later. I'm going to come back and plate that at the end because the last couple items to go in there are your par-cooked ramen noodles and your bok choy, which don't take any time at all. So I don't want to put them in there when I'm cooking the chicken or else... The noodles will soak up all your broth. The bok choy is going to disintegrate. So we're going to do that towards the end. And let Love me it. just make sure that this is going to be on a low simmer here. Yeah, that, uh, that big bad boy, will, it'll put some heat to that for sure. Oh, definitely. That's why I'm like, I want to make sure it's not, look at that. There's a little, little temp change and it's already going crazy. All right, we're so, good there and we're gonna let that just go, guys. Chef Carol's asking, what so far, what's in the pot with the chicken? Just the oil, we just brown the, the oil, chicken thigh. The chicken, no seasoning. Then we have low sodium chicken broth and your shoyu ramen base. Bam. That's all that's in there. I did about two cups of the chicken broth. Your recipe says one cup. That's really up to you on how much broth you like. That's my favorite part of ramen. So I want a little extra broth. Sometimes I'll even do three cups in there um, and it's not gonna hurt it but definitely do the low sodium because you don't want to add all that extra salt for no reason. Right. And next, guys, is going to be one of my absolute favorites. So I love going to Korean barbecue. I, I love it. It's the whole event that we do with our friends, that we do with our family. I love taking new people to experience it with us as well. It's one of my favorite foods to eat with my husband. It's just, it's a fun time. And this particular is my favorite cut. This is gonna be our cross cut flank and style beef ribs. So if you go into a Korean restaurant, this will be called kalbi or gaibi, or I'm pretty sure I'm not pronouncing that exactly correct. So <laughs> forgive me. That's all right. <laughs> but you get the gist of it. This particular cut in restaurants will be called LA galbi and you can tell the main difference is that it's on the bone and it's a lateral cut. So you guys can see that bone peeking through there from the short ribs. If you've had short ribs before, you've probably had them cut the opposite way with the bone on the bottom, but this is LA Galbi. 
The reason they call this LA Galbi is it became really popularized in Los Angeles in Koreatown with a lot of uh, Korean American immigrants came over there. And this cut was supposed to mimic more of like a thinner ribeye cut that they thought would be a little bit more familiar for American eaters. And it also was a bit thinner, so it's easier to marinate and it's also quicker to cook on the grill. Um, traditionally, the kalbi cuts are a bit thicker, they're boneless, but it does take a little bit longer to cook them through and to marinate them. So this is a really awesome, awesome option. I love this. I love eating it off the bone. So this is my go-to with mm -hmm. Korean barbecue. And you lived in LA for a bit, right, Chef Scott? I, so I know you have to talked about super. Koreatown. We talked about the Korean barbecue and I love, man, I love, there's, that's what I miss about you know, those real rich food cultures where you have such diversity and there's right. really, I mean, LA Koreatown is like, it's literally like, I feel like it's world famous in the fact that it has so many, I mean, obviously Roy Choi, the Koji, the Korean yeah. fusion, like all that stuff kind of originated there. So there's all that, right. right? So, but there's just so many, I often say that your palate speaks more languages than you do. And there's so Definitely. many things that you, that, right. that they're familiar in so many cultures mm -hmm. that when you start tasting, you're like, oh, I, I really like this. I had right. no idea. I've never tried it. So I think that's the beauty of and the more you taste, the more you see how they all interconnect and how absolutely. they can be related. You may think that these flavors sound really foreign to you, but then you'll taste it, and all of a sudden it reminds you of something else, yeah. and you can kind of correlate that with each and other. that's I mean, the beauty of what you're teaching too, Chef, is the fact that, you know, if you go in and you don't know, you know, like, hey, maybe you're not doing a ramen, maybe you're doing just a, a salad or whatever it is, or just something really, you know, just very classic and very kind of right. whatever, it, you can use these sauces as that, as a salad dressing, right. as a whatever, in tandem, and not just have to use it for, you know, whatever. That's what's great about these. Is they really do lend themselves to many Yeah, they're things. very versatile. We're actually using our bulgogi marinade by Stick and Tine. So you may say, why am I using a bulgogi marinade and bulgogi seasoning, which is what I put on the ribs right now, um, instead of a kalbi one? Well, the answer is this has become, and it's kind of presented as our all-purpose Korean barbecue sauce. So this will do a really good job of mimicking those flavors uh, for the marinated meats that you get at Korean barbecue. So you can use it interchangeably. If you want to do the spicy marinated squid you usually get, you could use this. If you want to do this with chicken, if you want to do bulgogi and get some really thin sliced ribeye marinated in there for about 30 minutes and then cook it up. I mean, you can do that. So this is a great all purpose. Use it for whatever. I use it on salmon at the store last week, kind of just brushed it down on some roasted salmon and it was a fantastic flavor. Chef, how, uh, how long would you want that to marinate ideally? So ideally at home, I'd probably do these overnight if I could, if I had yeah. the chance, but I actually did them in the store this weekend, kind of how we're going to do it now and immediately put it on there. And honestly, you still get a ton of flavor from the sauce. We have a little secret at the end that I'll show you that's going to help boost the flavor as well, but you really don't have to do it for a long time. If you want a little extra flavor, save some of the marinade that's been unused. As soon as they come off the grill, you can also put that on afterwards, but these are still going to taste delicious and I'm literally just marinate them right now with the bulgogi seasoning and the bulgogi marinade. All right, we so, have a couple questions for you, Shep, as you okay. go over there and do yep. that. We'll I'm follow you over to the grill. walk these over to the grill. Um, Anna or Anna would like to know, what's a good vegetarian option for the ramen instead of the meat? Like what else, what would you, what would you use as a centerpiece? I would definitely use tofu. tofu. So if you wanted to do a little bit of firm tofu in there, and the great part about that as well is it's not going to take as long. So you're, the ramen you would only have That's to true. let simmer for uh, maybe about 10 minutes, I'd say, for firm tofu. That way um, it can just soak up a little bit a little of that broth. That or like you that. can just do mushrooms. You do some really meaty like shiitake mushrooms would be fantastic in there as well. Or if you eat egg, just the eggs that we're gonna do in there would be fantastic with the noodles and veggies. And you can really load in on some more veggies as well. Yeah, I was gonna say, you probably love that, would be so good. So right. I, we got another question for you. So I would be thinking of ways to make it less spicy, but they wanna know what would, one thing you could add to the, uh, what could you add to the ribs to make them more spicy, the sauce? So you could add a little bit of sriracha if you wanted to. That's a pretty familiar flavor to a kind lot of, of people. It yeah, mix it into that bulgogi marinade before you put it on there. You can chop up some serrano pepper. 
if you wanted to, put that in there as well. Or you could do Korean gochujang, which is a chili pepper paste. You have to look specifically for the spicy one. Um, for me, I don't think it's uh, really, really too, too spicy. So if that's what you're looking for, you can add that. But if you like the heat, I would definitely say probably sriracha will be your best bet because it's going to yeah, blend into keep, that marinade really same. nicely. Yeah, and it's going to stay in that same realm of flavors for you as well. So we have these going. These are a little bit thicker, guys, um, than you would see at a Korean restaurant. I'm fine with that because I like them to go about medium. But if you do see these um, and they're this thick in store, talk to your butcher, right? That's one of the best friends you can make at HEB. They're always happy to cut you whatever you want. So if you tell them specifically, hey, I want to do Korean barbecue at the house, the short ribs you have out there are pretty thick. I'm looking for something a little bit thinner. You know, can you do that for me? They're gonna help you out, right? We love helping people out at HEB, especially with some fun recipes like that. So definitely just talk to your butcher. And you guys can see we're getting some really nice char on these ribs, especially because right. of that marinade. That the marinade. In there. Yeah, it yeah, smells amazing. Helps by the way. it caramelize. I wish you guys could smell this. It's, it's so really, good. Really, really good. So, so, so good. The uh, one thing I was going to say, you were talking about the, the partners in store, the meat market partners. Like, right. You need to get to be best friends with these folks because I'm telling you, they're yeah. the ones who can show Definitely. you where things are. They can always order things for you. They can cut things specifically, not just in meat market, but I'm talking seafood, yeah. produce, cooking connection. Beer and wine. Beer and wine Those are the friends you need because whenever you need some help picking out stuff, they're more than happy to help you out. Because yeah, everybody that we have in those departments is super passionate about what they do. If you're going to ask a butcher about their favorite cut of meat and they are the expert you can tell that right or even beer and wine they're super excited to give you recommendations and your cooking connection chefs right we're back right. come see us we can help you across the board with all of that wine produce meat seafood come see us come visit us in store we're super happy to be back and just talk to your local cooking connection chef and just kind of ask them for whatever recommendations you need and as you guys can see, I busted out the kitchen shears. This is a super popular item for that's Korean really, uh, barbecue. Super great, nifty as hack. well. So chef, I, what's great about that hack is too, is that um, you can run with kitchen shears, but you can't run with scissors. So that's who, the biggest thing. Who so told you that, Scott? Well, that's is what it? they just say. That's a common, yeah? you know, don't <laughs> run with scissors, but they never say anything about shears. So I usually run everywhere with my shears. So I wouldn't try that at home, folks. Just leave that for Chef Scott. So I'll stop doing that. I should probably yeah, stop. Yeah, you just, All yeah, right. I would definitely stop doing that. But, you know, it's up to you guys. I would not recommend that for anybody at home. He just likes to live on the wild side. So, you know, we'll, we'll save that for him. Got so that right. the nice thing about cutting these two guys, you usually do this at Korean barbecue because it's going to cook a little bit faster whenever you cut them down like this. And you are also going to already have these in individual little serving pieces so you know i had them they're about four ribs long earlier um if you don't want to commit to eating that if you're having guests this is great because they can pick up two they can pick up one everybody's appetite's a little bit different so that is a really really great way to kind of cater to everybody right because you can really get as much as you want on your plate Chef, those look amazing. Rob, what a shot. What kind of, a, look at that shot right now. It's like the close up, the meat, the bubbling sugar is on top. It's so amazing. All right, we got a question for you, Chef. Yep. It's a sake question. What sake would you recommend for this? You know, I'm going to be honest, I'm not a huge sake drinker. So maybe Chef Scott can help me out with that. Do you have any favorites? Oh, I'll help you. Uh, I'm not a sake drinker <laughs> How at did all. I know? So, Cynthia, I would just close your eyes and pick one. <laughs> Um, I, uh, Chances me, are it's going to go great. If I had to pick a sake, I would go, this is just me being a consumer, I'd okay. pick the one with the prettiest bottle, which right now is the Shochiko by Premium, Ooh, which is like a really yes. pretty like rose, like, and it's kind of like smoked glass. Mm -hmm. But that, again, I've never tried it, but I would just say, you know. It'd be fun to take a nice bottle like that to a dinner party too. That's a great host yeah. gift. Everybody gives wine, give something different, give a bottle of sake. That would be super fun. So these guys are ready for me. I like them a little medium rare. You can leave them on a little bit longer if you like. That is totally up to you. But we are going to finish these off. So remember I told you guys we had a little, little secret option to do here at the end. And this is our ginger scallion everything sauce. So I that. that's where you can use this on everything, right? Right, exactly. It doesn't have to be just the Korean ribs. 
So this barbecue. has a little bit of tang to it if you taste it by itself, which is great to counteract all this fatty, really rich beef, beef flavor. So we're just gonna give them a little brushing there. This is great. So you, you have a lot of flavor here, right? You got the bulgogi sauce right. on this kind of fatty cut of meat. You're doing this little, you know, this ginger scallion sauce. You got a lot of great pushing and pulling and it's a great way. I love the way you're finishing this up with the scallions, but it's also just- Our favorite. It's a little, a little, little more, onion. like you said, a little bit of acid on top. It's a little more, right. you know, aromatic. Look at that, guys. Boom. Those are super awesome. We can't wait to eat them. They, it smells fantastic in here. Um, and that's just a really quick, delicious dinner. So we did that, of course, we have an indoor grill. If you guys don't have that at home, bust out your George Foreman, a cast iron would be great, a little griddle, um, maybe a grill skillet, so you don't have to commit to going outside and, you know, firing up tip, the yeah. grill. Totally get it. it's really hot outside right now. Cast iron's great, yes. Yeah, yeah. The surface great of the sun, option. We're creeping up on the surface of the sun. Yes. We're getting there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, inside is okay. But does definitely get hot. <laughs> it smells so good. Ooh. I know, I can't wait for those. I can't wait till we get to dig in. So next we're gonna be doing a super easy side dish. And it's healthy, it's light, and we, to make it even easier, are gonna be using our HEB ready to go broccoli. These are washed, these are cut, they're already a great option if you're looking for something easy for dinner. You can even steam these in the bag. There's usually instructions right on the back here if you want something quick. We're gonna do something a little bit better today. Um, I might be biased, but I think it's a lot better <laughs> than just oh, yeah. steaming them. But we're going to actually cook those with our new chili crisp with garlic. This is a super, super fantastic new item. Don't let the chili part scare you. It's not spicy. It's a toasted pepper oil with a little bit of fried garlic, fried shallot in there. So, so it has good. a great texture as well. I can eat that with a spoon. It's so good. I know. With eggs, everything. It's super, super good. It is. So and obviously chef, you said you're using the, the garlic. So I mean, the, sorry, the broccoli in the bag, which is great. Again, there's right. so many home run time savers as you're walking through, especially in produce, because you have these great vegetables that are literally already washed, already ready to go. Don't yep. worry about cutting up ahead if you're trying, if you're short on time. It's easy, right? Guys, we're just trying to make your life easier, so. And you made a great point earlier. You said if you don't want to do broccoli, you can also do, you made a point about green beans. What are some other ones, Chef? Right, you so um, let me get some of these a little closer to me because this is all going to happen pretty fast with the broccoli. But if you guys wanted, you could definitely use green beans. Would be great in here. Um, you could also use asparagus. That was a really, really great option. And we, let me season our broccoli first. I don't want to get that fire going too hot, too fast. So let's actually go ahead and do our broccoli. So this is your washed, trimmed broccoli, about 12 ounces. Put that into a bowl. And I just have to say it because you're using the kitchen and table borosilicate bowl. Gorgeous, That's right? Awesome. Our kitchen and table line. I'm using a lot of their products today. We did the ramen in as well as kitchen and table. It's a fantastic line by HEB. You guys can find them at your local HEB. They make beautiful dishes. They make great knives, great cooking ware. That's all we use at my house. I have probably bought way too much of it. I have a lot of different plates and items by them. Starting a collection and I'm running out of space. <laughs> Sorry, Carol, I don't want to confuse you. Boro silicate, not silk, not a silicon, not Silicon Valley. We're, we're doing the boro silicate bowl. If you have not been to HEB to pick up these fantastic glass bowls, they are so durable and they're mm -hmm. so amazing. They're so, so, there it is. so awesome. I was going to try and spell it in the chat, but I would have failed miserably at that. So there it is for you. I linked it. He'll get it to you. <laughs> so we just went in with my favorite, our sesame oil. Right? The sesame oil again, just giving it that, that base layer of really of great flavor. Of flavor, yeah. And giving our five spice seasoning something to stick to, right? So talk a little bit about the five spice, yeah. please, Chef. So this is a very, very particular flavor. Um, it is very pronounced. It is a really unique blend. So predominantly, there's a little fennel, star anise. There's usually some ginger some sesame, but really that star anise is the main flavor here that you can either love it or hate it. I'm not gonna lie, this is a little bit strong for some people, but I will have a trick at the end to show you guys that can kind of help with that. So I will say, try it this way first. Um, 
don't just try this by itself because it is a really strong flavor, but try this with the broccoli. And if you don't like it, that's totally fine. You can go right back to the beginning and use our Asian house rub. That's a fantastic option. Um, it doesn't have that star anise, so it's gonna still be savory. It still has the sesame. It still has all those really unique Asian flavors, but it's gonna be a lot more mild. But you can use it the same way. You already have it from the pork. So if Five Spice is not something that your family you think will probably be into, after you taste this, you can easily alter it and just use a different seasoning. Chef, I love star anise. I started using star anise and allspice berries when I brined my turkey for Ooh. the holidays because it just gives it like a dip. Again, there's certain flavors yeah, that definitely. you recognize that you're, they're not going to overwhelm you, but they right. just really complement right. other things. Right, and star this anise one. plays well with others. Alone, it's a lot to take on sometimes, but the trick I show you at the end, I'm going to show you why I use it and how I like to eat my five spice and star anise flavored things. Um, so I'll show you guys that at the end. This is gonna be our seasoned broccoli. Remember, just toasted sesame oil, so a really deep, rich flavor. Layer of that, and then the Szechuan five spice seasoning by Adams Reserve. So we're gonna go ahead, take that over to the heat here. And this is a real quick sear. I like the fact that you are, uh, you could, like you said, you could microwave it in bag. You right. could blanch it if you wanted to, but I love, right. you're doing high heat, really mm -hmm. fast because you want that texture, right, Chef? Right. I want to keep a little bit of a bite to it. So I have found that a lot of people that tell me that they don't like certain vegetables, it's how they grew up eating it. And usually when I ask, it ends up being an oversteamed or just boiled vegetable. And honestly, that is the quickest way to take a lot of flavor and nutrients out of your vegetable. So for me, I don't parboil a lot. I know you probably see that a lot on shows and hear a lot that that's how you're supposed to cook your veggies. I personally like it better this way because you still get a bite from the vegetable. You still know that it's broccoli, you know, you don't lose all of that in boiling it or steaming it. I feel it. like any vegetable that I can cut with a fork easily, like butter, I yeah, just Yeah, it's not for the, me. I throw in the right. trash. I just scoop like, it uh, right. I'm good. Yeah. From my plate to the trash. Definitely try it this way. You might make some believers in your house and start getting them to eat broccoli. I love the shot overhead. So you got the chili garlic crispy out of the yeah, pan. Yeah, look at that going oil. in there. All that yummy garlic's already in there for you. And this is just going to be a really, really quick saute. Get that chili oil. Just cook the outside of the broccoli a little bit, get it soft. Still yeah, I nice love green beans this way. Like this is a fantastic recipe. Chinese just blistered green beans are just ugh, amazing. I'm with you. So we're just really got this at a high heat and we're just charring that broccoli. Keep moving it around. You don't want that chili crisp to burn. If you leave it just sitting there on the heat, you will have a chance of burning those garlic and shallot pieces. Burnt garlic is not a great flavor. It's not the worst, but it's also not great. So let's try to avoid that. Carol is loving your vegetables right now. She's loving Ooh, it. Thank you, Carol. I wish you could taste them. Well, you right, well you're doing it at home, right? That's it. right. So Let us know what you buy. think. She's going to take one of our HEB trucks. She'll be heading to everybody's house. Give everybody a little taste of this, right? That's Check right. <laughs> We'll so I feel like happen. you're never going to let me leave San Antonio. You're just promising Stand so by. many things. <laughs> <laughs> I'll figure it out in the next 10 minutes. <laughs> so guys, this is as easy as it is, right? Super quick. You can go a little bit longer if you don't like that much bite to it. Totally get it. It's personal preference. If you're going to go a little bit longer, lower the heat though so you don't burn that garlic and that shallot. And look how well it absorbed all that. Some of the, some of the uh, I you know, know, liquid in the that. broccoli just kind of like just... Yeah, it's it just little in. sponges for all of this chili garlic sauce, right? So we're going to get that over and plate it. Just a super, super quick side dish, guys. So this, the broccoli, if you had some rice going for your spare ribs, this would be a super, super quick dinner that you could get on the table at no time at all. Um, we are going to finish this off with a little bit, you can do some extra chili oil in here if you like, a little extra chili garlic crisp. Yes, please, love that stuff. All right, you can never have enough. So just do a little more on there, just to kind of, so it'll be its own little sauce in there as well with the heat. I can't even, I'm trying to describe, like in my mind, as I, as I know what it tastes like, but for those that don't, just imagine mm -hmm. like you're caramelizing and frying garlic and shallots and like these right. chilies, 
And so all it infuses into that oil. Yeah. So it's, it's just so this good. aromatic, delicious. So, so, so good. So good. So we're going to do a little green onion on here as well. And we can do a little sesame seed. Beautiful. The little trick I was telling you guys about would be at home. I actually take this and I will um, add a little bit of honey. So at the very end there, I would just drizzle it with honey right over the top. That's gonna counteract a little bit bitterness from the vegetable. The charring will help with that as well, but it's also gonna help balance out that five spice flavor. So I like five spice with sweeter elements. So like Chinese char siu barbecue type flavor. I feel like that's one of the best ways to showcase five spice for people that are getting introduced to it because yeah. it's a very familiar flavor and it's also not too aggressive on the five spice because that sugar does a great job of balancing it. So for this or my Brussels sprouts or green beans, just a little drizzle of honey on there. Try it out that way. Like I said, you can always use the Asian house as well as an option. So far, Lauren, girl, you are doing the Lord's work tonight. I'm telling you, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is all going well i mean it's all super easy it right is. i mean these are all easy and honestly i can't even take credit because really this stuff has done all the hard work for you like this is why we love selling this stuff this is why we love bringing these recipes to you guys it is really a great time saver i mean who has time to cook a you know 10 hour ramen broth or you know or if you just don't feel like going right. out to have it either and you feel like that's the only option now you have a great easy way of doing it at home. And it, these are all great interactive recipes for the kids too. Yeah. And I will tell you, getting kids to cook the stuff with you, I've learned this from cooking classes. Once they cook it, they'll try it because they cooked it and they take ownership of it. So I've had a lot of kids in classes mm -hmm. and their parents are like, oh, they never eat broccoli. They never eat salad and they're eating it because they made it. So they're genuinely curious. Kids are very curious. Absolutely. Curious people, so get their little hands it's in It's great there. to get them. I'm a big fan of getting them cooking early. Also, having right. many hands in the kitchen frees up one of yours to enjoy exactly. your wine or cocktail. What? Or your margarita. That's <laughs> one of my own personal tips, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to finish up our ramen now. We still have that simmering away. I'm excited. Check your chicken temp. It should be good if you're using the thin, boneless, skinless. It's been going for a while there, but... Your recipe card calls for baby bok choy. This is not baby bok choy. This is big daddy bok choy. This is all that we could find in store. And that's totally fine. If you guys ran into the same problem, maybe your curbside order, they sub this for you. Same, same idea. If it's a baby bok choy you're doing, cut it in half like this after you've cleaned it and kind of washed out the inside like you do celery. Put that in there whole. If you have a big guy like this. I love bok choy. Man, me I love bok choy. too. I'm actually gonna take off most of the stem because this is a quick cook. If I was doing it for a little bit more time, then I would put in a little bit more of the stock. It's totally edible, but for what we're doing today, this will be plenty. So if you can't find endive or endive, if you see it, it's sometimes it's hard to find, um, mm -hmm. Belgian endive, I love to use, usually they can stuff those with like tuna or whatever. Uh -huh. You take the ends of the bok choy, the big bok choy like that, you trim them, wash them just like you said, yeah. and then you blanch them in like vegetable stock just to yeah. soften them a little bit, and you do can it the use same those way, as right? like a boat. You can use them awesome. like a little, little boat to do it. If you guys can't get this, Napa cabbage will work perfectly. Love Napa cabbage A little well. water spinach or broccoli, um, not broccoli, spinach would work well. So we're going to take this right over to our ramen, which you guys saw was still simmering away. And we are going to add in our bok choy. A little extra here. I love that. Got the six minute eggs, you got the ramen happening. Mm -hmm. It's, it's all, all gonna together. come together in a second here. And we have our par cooked noodles. Okay, so we're gonna add those in here. Pam said she was oh, able to keep up with the butternut spring rolls. The pork is so delicious, but not as pretty as yours, but still awesome. Oh my gosh, I bet they're beautiful. I'm so glad. I'm, this is so work. cool because I love that I get to hear from people in real time actually oh, trying it and kind of working through if you do have an issue or anything with the recipe. That's the awesome thing about these classes, guys. They're loving it. It's, it's honestly, it's so great because you can do this in real time with us. If we have a problem, you'll see it. This is live. This it's is true. not pre-recorded. There's no, there's no do-overs. <laughs> if it fails, yeah, it fails. It's extremely, <laughs> extremely live. So, you know, if I mess up or, you know, it's just what happens and then we can just fix it together. So that's the best part about these Cooking Connection virtual classes. There's no movie magic here. There's none of that happening. I mean, if we came into an issue, you guys would see it. There would be no hiding it. And you said it, Lauren. This is, this is, these virtual cooking classes are literally 
HEB adds so much value on a daily basis, right. you know, just in everything that you do. But this is literally, these classes are designed to just, you know, help you better understand food, you mm -hmm. know, learn, add new tricks to your toolbar, totally. get great recipes, think outside the box when it comes right. to things that will get you out of your routine. So there's, there's so many great things. So we encourage you to go back, keep watching, rewatching, mm -hmm. keep watching Lauren. She's doing the ramen. Here we go. Final plating. Because this one's live, but this will be up. We're, we're going to re are recording it right now. So this will be on our YouTube channel along with past classes. So if this is your first one and this is your introduction, welcome. I'm so glad that I could host your first class. Definitely go back to the YouTube channel and check out some of our other chefs. We have amazing chefs here at the Culinary Center as well as Cooking Connection managers that have done these classes. And it's just a really great resource if you're looking to get into cooking, if you're looking to fine tune some aspects of your cooking or you just want some good entertainment. I will say That's these right. videos are pretty awesome. One of these days I'll cut myself and it'll be great. People will post it on, it'll do something. It'll be a little, <laughs> little fun risque thing to have on there. A little, oh my little, gosh. little danger. <laughs> you never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> you really, really don't. <laughs> Lauren, but that looks amazing. Thank you. So we're just plating this up with a little broth, a little chicken in there as well, guys. I'm going to set this right to the side Look here. At that. Overhead cam for the win. Awesome. See, very live. I'm like, where? <laughs> Try to figure that out. So you got your eggs out of the water, right? They're nice and cooled down. So we're going to go ahead and cut into our six minute egg. Stand Hopefully this works. Yolk. I can oh, see yeah. it's going to work. You can Look see the way you cut at it. that. I mean, how beautiful is that? That on your avocado toast. I'm telling Ugh. you, that's like my favorite way to use a six minute egg, avocado toast. A little mm. runny yolk so, on top. So, so, so good. And we're going to put a little nori on here, which is a little seaweed. A little more umami flavor in there. Right. Just a little more depth of flavor there. Some green onion, our favorite. Told Absolutely. you guys it's going on everything tonight. And so last but not least, this is our Chishimi Togarashi seasoning, which Adam's Reserve is making now. This is a it's five great. spice. Adam's but Reserve, it's in a bottle just like that. Yep. Right. Great. And this is why I said hold off on the salt. We're going to finish it off with a little bit of this seasoning. And the special thing about Chishimi Togarashi is it's predominantly a chili pepper powder, that spice mixture that's used for ramen and it's used for noodles a lot in Japan. It's predominantly chili pepper ground, but not spicy. There's not a lot of really spicy foods in Japanese cuisine. That's more of a Southeast Asian type thing, like Thai, where you get that fire. Um, so don't be scared of that heat wise. It's just a really unique spice blend. If you guys can see that, it has a little sesame, black and white. It also has ginger, a little it. bit of the chili pepper predominantly. And the really special part is a little bit of citrus peel. So this is going to have a little orange, but you can also find some that have yuzu and that citrus. Like I said earlier, if you're watching your salt intake, always try a little citrus, a little lemon or lime because that naturally reacts on the palate. Pretty similar to look, it's Texas guys. There's a big fly and he smelled all this great food. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. coming to join the party. So it, that citrus in there is going to mimic salt on the palate. Um, so definitely wait. So you have it fully plated before you go ahead and add a little salt if you think you need it. I think you'll be fine without it, but you know, personal preference. Um, and that's it guys. This was super, super quick. We have all of these awesome recipes that you can enjoy with your family. And I'm really just so happy that I got to be here tonight and to do this cooking class with you guys. Um, I really hope that you guys got some awesome information out of this. I hope this opened up your world a little bit to Asian cooking. And I hope we really made it simple for you guys. I hope that you go into your stores, talk to your local Cooking Connection chef, ask questions, take advantage of some awesome deals if you wanna try these products right now. Um, they're all on sale, so it's a great time to try it out. But I hope that you guys really, really enjoy these recipes tonight. Chef, I learned a ton. I am so grateful you were here. I learned a lot. I've, I'm going to take my spring roll game to the next level by awesome. watching a master I'll be there. do it. I'll I'm be super there, right? excited. <laughs> yeah. um, obviously, like like Lauren said, she wants you to go back. We can we can watch yep. this over and over and over again once they post it. Yep. Um, we have some upcoming classes, it. right? Upcoming classes. Yeah. Go to our classes. Uh, HEB.com slash classes to the YouTube channel always, yep. YouTube.com slash HEB. You're awesome. Uh, chef, take Thank us home. Thank you. So 
like I said, the guys, this is our Taste of Asia event. I'm so happy that I got to be here with you guys. Don't forget to stop into your local HEB, visit with our local Cooking Connection chefs. You can visit me in Cypress, Texas at our Fairfield Market HEB. That is my home there in Houston. So if you want to come by and visit and check out some of my own personal recipes that I'm demoing at the store, that's where you can find me. Uh, thank you so much tonight. Thank you for having me. I had such a good time and I hope I see you guys again, maybe on a future class.